Welcome to the Talk Like a Leader podcast, where we explore the mindset, skill set, and habit set of leadership communication. Using these tips, techniques, and tactics, you'll be able to talk like a leader to build better relationships and get more done. Your host is Guy Harris, who has more than 20 years of combined professional and military experience in consulting, coaching, and training in areas like team and interaction dynamics, communication strategies and tactics, as well as emotional intelligence. Take it away, Guy. Hi, this is Guy Harris. Welcome to Talk Like a Leader. This week's episode is titled, How to Coach a Team Member Who is Doing Nothing Right. Step one, when you find yourself in this situation, is to do a reality check. And the question here is, is the person in mind, the person you're thinking about, really doing nothing right? Or are they doing about 80 or 90% okay, and maybe 10 or 20% of what they do isn't ideal? Now, what I've usually seen is it's more likely to be the latter situation where much of what a person does is okay. And there are a few annoying or less than ideal or frustrating behaviors they have. And because of just natural human negativity bias, we slip into judging all of their behavior by the one or two or minority of things that they do that frustrate us. And then, unfortunately, that starts to flavor or color our perception of everything they do when it's actually some things they do that aren't ideal. It's not really that they're doing nothing right. They're just not doing everything right. And we get frustrated by those deficiencies we see. I'll actually acknowledge that even in situations where a minority of behaviors are less than ideal, that you can have situations where the negative impact of the less than ideal actually outweighs the positive they bring. So the net of their performance is negative. It's just not that everything about their performance is negative. So the first thing we have to do is do a reality check. And if they're truly doing literally nothing right, or in the case where the negative they bring to the team, the damage, the the lack of effectiveness they bring, whatever, however you want to call it, that the negative or downside of their performance outweighs the positive, well, then we have to consider whether this person should stay on the team at all. And maybe coaching isn't really the right approach in the long run. Maybe what you need to do is consider starting whatever process you have for, as I've heard it called, managing them out of the organization. Now, maybe you have a different phrase for it, Effectively, it means leading to a termination of employment scenario. I'm not highly in favor of pursuing that too quickly or too glibly. I think that's a pretty serious thing we want to carefully consider. Uh, I'm, I acknowledge there are situations where sometimes we l- legitimately do have to terminate employment. I will suggest, though, that in most situations, even if it's a net negative situation, if you will engage in a positive way, you might actually find a way to turn it around. You might actually find a way to encourage the person in a way that creates a scenario where they fix their performance and start doing okay work. Now, maybe they're in a situation where what we're asking them to do just isn't really the thing they're good at. They're not a bad person. They're just a bad fit for the situation. And then that opens a whole host of other conversations like possibly finding a way to restructure their assignment or put them in another role or those kinds of things before we go down the path that we just have to get rid of the person. Okay. General idea is that I'm prepared to confront the situation where the person needs to leave the organization. And I would prefer, I think most people would prefer to find a way to keep the relationship with the person and put them in a scenario where they can win and the organization can win. So let's start with We're trying to turn this into a conversation that leads to keeping this person in the organization and finds a way for them to contribute in a way that is comfortable for them, benefits the organization, helps the team, and generally leads in a positive direction. Now, the way you do that is that we approach the situation from a a coaching and encouragement perspective rather, rather than correcting. This is a bit of a mindset shift in that we want to move away from correcting their behavior and into encouraging their behavior. The idea is that if we can get them to do more of what they do well or do 
what they're doing now in ways that are more comfortable for their skill set or their approach, help them find successful ways to do things and encourage them to do more of that, then by definition, they'll do less of the stuff, stuff that's annoying or less of the stuff that's not ideal. So more of effective stuff equals less of not effective stuff. And we achieve the more of effective stuff by encouraging more of the effective stuff than by getting rid of the negative stuff. It's actually uh, a reality of human behavior that you don't really get rid of behaviors. You don't get rid of performance. You replace it with other behaviors or other ways of performing. And the more we can focus on helping people find better ways to do things, we don't really have to spend a lot of time talking about what's not done well. We can just focus on doing more of what is good. That's the mindset idea. Replacing the not ideal with better or more appropriate or more effective. It's also important to recognize another mindset idea is that when we're trying to help people improve, we're trying to help people get better. And on a broad stroke basis, remember that better is actually a modifier of good. It says that getting better does not imply that the current state is bad. It could be a good or okay, okay less than ideal state that we want to get better rather than a bad state that we want to fix. It really comes down to a mindset shift and keeping our perspective as a leader in the mindset of improvement over perfection, progress over perfection improvement over perfect, keeping that kind of mindset in, in top of our minds so that we convey that idea to the people on our teams. As we engage with people, you know, shifting gears from mindset perspective to what are some specific things I can do, I want to engage people in a coaching conversation and try to find ways to help them see the gap between where we are and where we'd like to be rather than to tell them the gap. I know that sometimes we'll run into situations where people just don't see what's wrong with what they're doing or what the outcome is. They just don't understand how it's not okay. And we might have to explicitly explain to people. There are situations where that's appropriate. A better scenario, I think, is to ask questions that might lead them to recognize there's a gap on their own accord rather than tell them that there's a gap. You can ask these kinds of questions. For example, you can ask people what they were hoping to achieve. You can ask them how they hoped things would turn out. You could ask them what they believed the expectations or goals were. You could ask them if the actual results matched their hoped for results or what they believed to be the expected results. So by asking questions that lead to gap identification, maybe we can get them to recognize there's a gap on their own so that we don't have to tell them that there's a gap. Now, from a correction improvement standpoint, it is generally true. I'm not going to say that this is true for every human being on the planet. I'll say it's true for more people than it's not true for. That if they come to the conclusion on their own, they're more likely to own it and buy it and take action on it. If they are confronted, told that they did something wrong, made to feel not intelligent or not capable tends in the direction of creating negative energy or uh, hopelessness in their perspective, which actually tends to shut people down. They quit bringing their positive and creative energy to work, that kind of thing. So the better we get at helping them identify the gap so that they can see the gap and develop the plan for closing the gap, the closer we get to them bringing their energy and enthusiasm to work rather than engaging their work because, oh, I have to because my boss said to type of approach. If you do happen to run into the situation where the person simply doesn't see the gap, you can try to tell them. And one of the ways you can do that, again, we're trying to tell them gently as opposed to bluntly. Uh, we're trying to engage in honest and direct communication that falls short of brutally honest. Now, if I'm dealing with the person who wants brutally honest, well, then give it to them. It's just not most people. Here are some phrases that might help you get to honest and not brutally honest. You might say something like, well, that's not exactly what I was expecting. Or, you know, actually, I was hoping that we would achieve this. Or actually, I was hoping it would look this way. Something like that. 
The idea is to find a way to verbalize or state your expectation without directly saying that they were wrong. And as I already said, this is a generally good, although not always best, approach. Because, you know, some people do want you to be brutally honest. As I said already, just not most people. Once you've identified the gap and both of you understand it, you understand it, they understand it, and you have the same picture of it in mind, then you're in a position to use positive feed forward. Positive feed forward rather than negative feedback. And actually, I would recommend using feed forward in a question asking way rather than a statement way. For example, is there a way we could do that better in the future? Or is there a way we could do that differently next time so that we can get closer to our desired result? Is there some other way we could do that that might give us better results? So asking questions that point in the direction of problem solving on their part rather than direction on your part. You're pointing towards the expectation and asking them how things could be done differently so that you engage in a collaborative problem-solving session where you are, in effect, from, from a solving the problem standpoint, you are peers, not boss and subordinate. You, as the supervisor, clearly need to define what needs to be done if they don't understand. In a perfect world, I would hope that they would actually understand what needs to be done without a lot of direction. It's just not what we usually see. We're probably going to need to set some expectations or set some goals or define for people what needs to be done. And then we need to work with them to figure out how to do it. That's the goal of Positive Feed Forward. How do we get to our desired result rather than directing people on what they're supposed to do? There's really three things to consider here is one mindset adjustment, and then if our mindset is in the right place, two steps. The first thing to ask when we're confronted with a person who is doing, doing nothing correctly is to ask ourselves, reflect, is it true that they're doing nothing right, or am I just frustrated because of a few small things? Check that. Do a reality check. If it's the first case, then like I said before, you'll need to take whatever steps are necessary to move in the direction of having the person either fix it or leave the organization. That's sort of an ultimatum kind of conversation. And even in that case, I would say start with the softer approach that I'm recommending for what is the more likely scenario, the scenario where they're in most everything okay. They're just doing some things that aren't aren't ideal. We start with a coaching conversation where we hopefully get them to identify the gap and get them to identify the plan for resolving the, the situation. And then we use positive feed forward questions and statements to encourage them towards the desired outcome. If you can use these strategies, even in those times where you're really frustrated with the person that your initial perspective is they're doing nothing right, you can talk like a leader. This has been the Talk Like a Leader podcast. You can listen to this show every week wherever you get your podcast. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm Guy Harris, and thanks for listening.